Hi, my name is Valerie, and today we are going to integrate ANSYS HFSS software with SDK through Python to show a dynamic phased array. To start, we're going to start inside of SDK. Here on my screen, you can see that we have a C-17 aircraft, and it has a couple waypoints already been added. We're going to add an antenna to this aircraft, and we're going to show that the phased array antenna is able to dynamically change. To start, we're going to add an object which the antenna will point at. We're going to add a default facility, and on this facility, we're going to add a receiver. And then our C-17 aircraft, we're going to add a transmitter. Here we can see that we have our transmitter sent to the simple transmitter model. We're going to change this to a complex transmitter, so we can change the properties on the antenna tab. We're going to start by changing the frequency to a smaller frequency because we want to see the changes from the far field and near field effects. We're going to actually change this to 3.5 gigahertz. Now on the antenna tab, we're going to change this to a phased array. And again, we're going to change the design frequency to a lower frequency so that we'll be able to see the near field effects. Now when we come back to our SDK scenario in our 3D graphics window, we can see that we have our C-17 aircraft and facility. We're going to add angles and analysis workbench that will be able to more clearly represent what we're pointing at. First, we're going to start by adding our vectors. We're going to start with a displacement vector, and this is going to be our antenna pointing vector. Our origin point is going to be from our transmitter center to the center of our receiver. Next, we're going to add another vector, and this vector is going to be a projection vector. And this projection vector is going to account for our body axes so that it is the same in ANSYS HFSS as it is inside of SDK. We are going to name this vector pointing position. We're going to use our source vector to be our antenna pointing. And we're going to use our reference plane as the body XY, which it is by default. Next, we're going to add two angles. And these angles will represent where our antenna is located and that it is pointing along our two vector to our receiver. We're going to change the type to be a dihedral angle. And this dihedral angle is going to represent our phi angle. We're going to have our from vector be our body x on our transmitter. We're going to have our two vector be our pointing position vector. And we're going to have our about vector be on our transmitter, and it's going to be about the body z. We're going to have a range be from 0 to 360 degrees to represent our phi angle. And again, because we created our phi position, now we need to create our theta position. We're going to keep this one as between vectors, and we're going to name this theta position. And this angle is going to take our antenna position. Our from vector is going to be our transmitter's body z. And our two vector is going to be our antenna position vector. Now that we've created our vectors and angles, we're going to add this on to our transmitter. So we're going to go back to our transmitter's properties. And we're going to click the 3D graphics vector tab. And on our vector tab, we're going to add our two vectors. So I'm going to multi-select our antenna pointing and position pointing. I'm going to change the color. That's something that's a little bit easier to see. We'll go with orange. And then we're going to go to our angles tab, and we're going to add our theta and phi angles. We're going to make these white so they're a little bit easier to see and differentiate. Now when we go back to our 3D graphics window, we can see that we have our antenna pointing and our pointing position. And these 
two angles and vectors are going to represent exactly where our antenna is looking at and making sure that it's looking at our receiver. So now where is our antenna phased array? Well, we actually need to define that in ANSYS's HFSS software. So now we're going to save our SDK scenario and go into ANSYS. So here, now that we have ANSYS pulled up, we can see that under our project manager, we actually have two different solutions. We have our C-17, which actually represents the C-17 aircraft we have inside of SDK, and we have our array-driven model. We're going to start in the array-driven model today. So this array is able to have our far field data, which is embedded and modified with our coupling. Our response can then be calculated. So if we expand analysis and we right click on setup, we can choose analyze and this will look at our response and find a correct solution. We will then apply a state vector which will be multiplied to the elements for scaling. This will effectively add weights uh, to our elements and then it will create our antenna pattern. And after rescaling we will have a super pattern which we can then call from and based on our antenna pointing we will and our frequency we can then choose our dynamic pattern. Next, we're going to look at our results and we're going to create a gain plot. So we're going to right click on results. We're going to choose create far fields report. And we're going to create a 3D polar plot to look at our results. Here we're going to choose our gain, our gain total, and we're going to see what our phased array or one of our options of phased arrays would look like. So here inside of ANSYS, we can already see what one combination um, out of our super pattern might look like. So now having this data open inside of ANSYS, we're going to communicate this into SDK using Python. And we're going to use a plug-in point and a developed script inside of Python, which will be able to give this data to SDK based on the inputs from SDK. So as we pull up Python, we are looking at our far field report. So this is a built up example inside of Python, um, which will let you see all of the different variables as well as the plots. So this does not rely on ANSYS, HFSS, or STK. So we can run this inside of Spider, and then we can pull up our plots, or we can look at our variable explorer to see what all of our different variables are and what inputs we might need for SDK. And we'll recreate this plot inside of SDK. And now I'm going to pull up our script that we're going to use inside of SDK. Uh, with this, we are going to rely on frequency, pointing position, and phi and theta to define what our phase array will look like. So as we open SDK, we're going to go into our transmitters properties. And on our antenna tab, instead of using the default phased array, we're going to use an antenna script. We're going to change the design frequency to be 3.5. Uh, this is because with the lower frequencies, you're more able to see blockage as well as near field effects. So we're going to go to 3.5 gigahertz. And we're going to load our script that we were just looking at. We cannot see the phased array yet because now we need to change the properties so that we're able to visualize this inside of our 3D graphics window. We are now going to show our antenna gain pattern by going to the 2D and 3D graphics. So in the 2D contours, we're going to check the show and show contour graphics. And we're going to change the resolution to be 15 degrees with 25 points and 5 degrees with 19 points. On the 3D graphics attributes, we're going to choose show volume. We're going to have a minimum displayed gain of negative 15 dB. And we're going to have our resolution be from 15 and 25, as well as our elevation resolution at 5 and our points of 19. Now when we choose OK in our 3D graphics window, we'll see our 3D graphics volume as well as our graphics on the ground. As we play throughout our scenario, we will see that our phased antenna will change with the antenna position. This is using ANSYS's HFSS and is finding a solution at every time step. 
After this has been run once, we can run it from our file. Inside of our Python, instead of using from file, we can say from file equals true. This will use our saved solution. We can reload our script, and now when we play through our scenario, we will not have to update at every time step. Thank you for watching, and if you have any more questions, feel free to contact our support team. Thank you.